All right, everybody, this is uh, Mr. Cogshill. So today we're going to talk about this chapter, Lesson 2. This is with, um, we have a beaker of hot water here, and we have a beaker of cold water here, and we're going to look at the molecular motion uh, of these two glasses of water here. So anyways, as we look at this, uh, the investigating question at the top is big. So anytime you, I give you guys these lab, make sure you read the investigating question, which is, is the speed of water molecules different in hot and cold water? So that's kind of what this lab's going to be revolving around. So let's go ahead and drive into it. So it says the procedure here with the help of your partners. So you probably don't have a partner. I don't either. Uh, use a dropper to carefully place one drop of yellow and blue food coloring into the hot and cold water at the same time. Well, since it's only just me, I'm going to drop them in one at a time, but I'm going to try to do it as fast as possible. Um, and then we're going to allow the colors to mix here for a couple minutes just to kind of see what's going on. And then we'll go ahead and take a look at these questions. Okay. So like I said, if you can see here, I got my hot water right here and I have my cold water right here. Get my dyes ready. So I'll put these drops here and here. All right. So we're going to watch these guys for a little bit here, and hopefully you guys can see what's going on. Um, so we can see here in my cold one that these guys are dropping straight to the bottom. Now if we look over here in this hot one, we can already see some mixing going on. We can uh, The color starting to rise to the top, so it went down, but now the color is rising to the top. So it seems like there might be a little more action going on here in this hot one or in this cold one we can still see our individual blue wisps, we can see our individual yellow, and we can still see kind of the clearness of the water. Where over here, we definitely see that the blue and the yellow have mixed together and almost formed immediately a turquoise color. Okay, so as we move on to questions one through three, let's take a look at them. So remember, we're looking at these at the macroscopic level, meaning uh, we're looking at them without the use of something to aid the human eye. Where at microscopic or the atomic level, we need help with the devices to see what's going on. So number one says, describe what the colors look like and how they moved and mixed in the cold water. Well, in the cold water, like I said, we can still see individual blue wisps or individual yellow wisps and even still some clearness in our cold one here. And then number two says, describe what the colors look like and how they moved and mixed. Well, they mixed a lot faster than the cold one. And we now already see a uniform color that the colors have mixed together. And I haven't touched these. I haven't, I haven't stirred them up beforehand or anything. They've been sitting still for a few minutes. Uh, so anyways, there's, there's no current. I'm not pumping water into them. I'm not stirring them or nothing. It's just the plain movement of the water molecules within uh, these beakers here. So then if we look at number three, it says, what does the speed of mixing colors tell you about the speed of the molecules in the hot and the cold water? Well, it's telling us, oh man, I had this in small window the whole time. Gosh, I'm sorry, guys. All right. So anyways, here's our big window. I hope that's not too big of a deal. That's my fault. But anyways, like I said, our hot one, we can see, we can see that it's uh, very uniform where this one, we can still see clearness in these wisps. Uh, but number three, so let's look at the speed of the, of the molecules. Well, the speed of the molecules in the hot water must be moving faster because this mixing occurred much faster than in the cold ones. So we have faster particles here in the hot water, and we have colder particles here in the cold beaker. Okay, number four uh, talks about there are several variables, right, that we want to keep consistent like the amount of water in each cup, the type of cup used, the number of drops of food coloring we use, and when the coloring was added to the water. So um, the last one there, number four, was probably the most important one, which was the one that I kind of had to tweak a little bit. But I ended up dropping them into the cold first, if you guys remember, and they're still not mixed fully. And then I dropped it in the hot, where now they, they by far mixed way before the cold. OK, so we should have kept that one consistent as possible because we only have want to have one uh, differing variable, and that was the heat. Right. So anytime we do an experiment, we want to keep every variable, everything we possibly can totally constant uh, or the same, I should say. And the only thing should be different is one variable. And in this case, it is the heat of the water, the temperature of the water. 
Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and switch over to these animations for questions five. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with that. So behind this, this is how I wanted to do it. I should have started out like this. All right, so here's this animation starting from number five. So you guys watched this earlier, or you, should, you could have done it on your own already, but this is cold water. We have these guys moving around. They're bumping into each other. And these individual particles, if you give them enough time, you can kind of follow one, and they'll stay in the same spot for a little bit. But if you follow it for long enough, it will eventually move spots or move its way out of the screen. But they're kind of slowly moving around. But let's go ahead and increase the temperature. And as we increase the temperature, we start noticing a increase of speed between the particles. There's even a more space, so we don't see quite as many particles in the screen now as the particles begin to spread out because they're moving faster, they're bumping off each other even harder, and then let's bump it all the way up. Now it's super hot, these particles are moving super fast, um, and there's less and less, and there's more space between them, okay? But let's also remember at the same time from last lab that these particles, they are attracted to each other. So that's why they're still in a liquid form because they are attracted to each other, but yet they're still moving faster. So here's hot and here is cold and they come right back together because they don't have as much speed between them. Okay, so if we look at five, it says heating a substance, blank molecular motion, heating a substance would increase molecular motion. Cooling a substance, Blank molecular motion means it would uh, decrease molecular motion. As molecular motion increases, space between molecules increases. As molecular motion decreases, then uh, the space between the molecules would also decrease. So now let's go ahead and look at number six. Okay, so number six, again, is drawing some of these pictures again. Okay, so if we draw this picture uh, in our cold water, right, it should look more like these particles are closer together. Particles are closer together and they're not moving near as fast. So these little motion lines that you see from the room temperature water, uh, you'll draw fewer of these motion li lines, meaning it's traveling slower. Now, if we go to the hot, so this is kind of in the intermediate, right? So if we go to hot, then it'd be the opposite where there's more space in between. There's fewer particles in the screen because there's more space in between each water molecule. All right. And they're because they're also moving faster. Okay. So hot water particles are farther apart. They're moving faster. The attraction between the particles is also lower because they act like magnets, okay? So if you have magnets that are really close together, you can feel the magnetic attraction. If you keep these magnets farther and farther apart, they feel each other less and less, and that attraction becomes weaker and weaker, okay? So number six, you should be able to draw those two. And so number six goes right along with number seven, okay? So remember what I said for number six. Number seven here, right? We're looking at our graduated cylinder here, okay? So we have a graduated cylinder and somebody pours in exactly 100 milliliters of water at room temperature, okay? And then they decide for whatever reason they want to heat that beaker up, or sorry, that graduated cylinder up to 100 degrees Celsius, which is the boiling point of water. So zero degrees Celsius is actually the freezing point of water, where then 100 degrees Celsius is the boiling point. Okay, so using what you know about the attractions between the water molecules and the way heat affects water, mo or sorry, molecular motion, explain why the volume of water in the cylinder increases when it is heated, okay? So again, go back to those drawings that you just drew in six and what we talked about, what happens when they move faster, they move slower, what happens to those attractions, okay? And I would like you guys to make sure you give me at least two complete sentences, okay? Restate that question. This is why the level in the graduated cylinder has increased because hot water tends to blank and the attractions are blank. And we did this here in this lab by showing these uh, animations and such. Okay. So that's kind of how you should go ahead and answer that question. Um, I realize, so I know this is at the end of the video, I realize that um, some of you guys may have done this already. Um, I encourage you to go back and maybe change some of your answers if this would help. Um, but you might have to do these lessons a little later in the day, about three o'clock. Right now it's 3.13 when I'm uploading this one. Uh, so you may want to hold off on doing some of these labs because I'll come back and do my videos like this or even do it just the next day. So if you wanted to hold off on doing a lab for science, maybe wait till the next day until I upload this video to help you guys out. OK, please let me know if you ever need any help. Control shift.